get into this week's episode, I wanted to make sure that I announced the winner of the intern competition that we aired a couple weeks ago. The winner was Team 2, which was Gavin and Sam, so congrats to those guys. We'll be putting together a little pheasant hunt and we'll probably film that uh, just for fun as well. So thanks for voting. It was really cool to see all the votes, first of all, that came in and all the comments recognizing the guys for their efforts and their hard work. So thanks again for that. Hope you enjoy this week's episode. There's a branch right here for a scrape. Oh yeah. We're gonna make that work. All right, it's late August here and I've got a few projects on the docket today, but before it gets too hot, I'm gonna start with hanging this stand. Uh, this is a spot, if you remember a few weeks ago, I came in and planted this little L-shaped microplast. Not very big at all. I don't even think it's a quarter of an acre. All right, one plot down. We've got everything seeded, uh, got fertilized. Uh, this right here, this cherry tree over my shoulder is what I kind of designed this plot around. So I'll come back and hang a stand, but it's a really cool plot. A lot of bedding nearby, kind of wise down here in the stand. Uh, the tree is just off of the Y, uh, the base of it. So it should be a really cool travel corridor through here. There is a small little cedar here with a lot of cover. And uh, if I get to shoot my recurve and end up bringing that out this season, that's where I'll be sitting is in that little cedar tree. It's not very hot the ground, but it's got a lot of cover. So one of those two spots. Overall, I'm really pleased with the growth. It's gonna be a really cool spot. And when I came and did this, I talked about this cherry tree that's back over here behind me. And I talked about that being what I thought would be the stand option. But staying true to my roots, I've also always had my eye on this little cedar tree over my left shoulder. And I think today, you know, doing a hanging hunt and a tree like that cherry tree will be easy. There's no branches or anything. It can do it nice and quiet. So that'll always still be an option. But today I'm gonna hang a tree, or hang a stand in this little cedar tree just because it's a lot more work, a lot more branches to cut and noise you're making and all that. Um, it's not very big, it's not very high off the ground. Obviously it's got a lot of cover though, but it'll make for some really close up encounters with the deer as they come through this little spot. And the access is killer. I'll take you down and show you how I'd get into the stand. And also in the back of my mind, I've been shooting my recurve a decent amount. And it's a killer setup for a recurve because it's low, close to the ground. You got the cover. I mean, you've got no more than a 15, 20 yard shot right here. So um, I'm gonna get that stand hung. That way it's set up, ready to go anytime me or someone else wants to come hunt it. So that's the project we're gonna start with today. I'll show you how killer this axis is. So back where we come in onto the property, we can jump right in this creek. Nice open creek to walk, pretty flat bottom. Pop up right here in this, this stand. I mean, this is all downhill. The bank covers everything. And we, you can't even see up by the plot or anything. Walk 15 yards right at the base of the tree, hidden the entire time, pop right up. Doesn't get any better than that. I love the feeling of hanging a tree stand and, and re feeling really good about it. This stand is probably the one I'm most anxious to hunt this fall. This is just a killer setup. I've told Matt and Grant probably five times how much I love it since I've climbed down from hanging it. Really good back cover. I showed you the killer access. It's definitely not the smart safe setup. The smart safe setup would be in that cherry tree up there, but this is the more fun setup. And at this point, that's what I'm about. These deer are gonna be just below eye level. So they're gonna be right on our lap in this little spot. Um, everything's inside of 20 yards. It's just gonna be one of those 
kind of pins and needles hunts every time in here just because the deer could pop out and be right in front of you. Uh, but I think it's going to be effective. The cover is obviously good in those cedar trees. I'm glad we hung it now instead of later because I did have to, of course, trim a bunch of branches. But now the stand is set and ready to go, and I can't wait for that first hunt. The next project is going to be moving cameras to their fall locations on this property, get everything teed up, and that way we can stay out of here for a little while. Today I'll be moving my cameras to their fall locations, creating mock scrapes, things like that. And I get a lot of questions on the Cuddy Link system, um, how it works, if it works, what things do I need to know. So I figured it'd be good to just kind of walk through the setup of this today and, and show you an example. There's a lot of different scenarios, obviously, but an example setup that this, this Cuddy Link system, especially when you add a Cuddy Link cell camera, uh, it's a game changer, there's no doubt about it. It opens up a ton of options with regards to camera placement, placement. but if, if you haven't done it before, it can be maybe a little bit overwhelming. So I'm just gonna walk through the process of, of how I like to set it up and just some little things you might need to know if it's your first time. First and foremost, before you even get to the field, there's a couple things you'll wanna do. One, you wanna set up, if you're using a cell camera, you wanna set up your account on Cuddyback's website. That way you can enter your cell camera details and get it registered, get an account registered. And then second of all, you'll want to make sure you have the latest firmware downloaded. And what I like to do is download to an SD card. I always keep this SD card with me. It's a different color than all the other SD cards that I use, so I always know this is the firmware one. So anytime I need to update a camera's firmware, it's just a matter of putting this blue SD card in the camera, going through the, me the menu, uh, menu items to update the firmware, to load the firmware onto the camera. I mean, it takes 30 seconds, it's not a hard process, uh, but I always like to keep this SD card on me. So you'll, you always want your cameras on the latest firmware and you'll want them to be on the same firmware so you don't have any uh, issues come up with sending images or anything like that. So next you'll want to decide which camera is going to be your home camera. If you're using a cell camera like this, obviously this one's going to be the home model. And so you'll want to set this up, ideally if you can, more or less in the center of your property. And the reason for that is the less daisy chain links, you can really run this anywhere, but let's say it's on the perimeter of your property. That means all the cameras are gonna have to daisy chain through each other to get back to the home camera. And one, that's gonna take up more battery life, the more talking these cameras have to do, and there's just more potential for issues. Whereas if your camera's in the middle, there's gonna be less of that. There's gonna be more cameras that can direct link to this home camera. So the way this system works, if you're not familiar with it, this is the only camera that's gonna need cell service. The rest of the cameras can be anywhere. They're gonna transmit the images to this home camera, which is then gonna transmit back to you. And that can be either through text message to your phone or to an email address that you provide on the back end when you set up your account. So for my example today, this property, we are on the high point. It's one long ridge and it falls off, almost like a mountain. It falls off on this side, falls off on this side. So we're in the center of the property on the highest point, have good cell service. And one note to remember there is, you know, cell service can vary from device to device. Your, your cell phone, if you have the same provider as your camera, can be an indicator. You know, I can look at my phone and in this case is Verizon. I can see I have good Verizon service, so most, most likely, uh, I'm going to have good service for this cell camera too, but it's not always um, a great comparison because sometimes you'll have good service with this even if you maybe only have one bar of service on your cell phone. So you can use that indicator, but the best way to do this is to run a cell test in the menu. You'll go in here, you'll run a cell test, it'll test the service, and if it's successful, it'll send you an email or a text message if you set it up that way. That's the best way to test the service. Don't just rely on your cell phone because sometimes it's a little bit different setup. One more thing to note before we head out to, to put this home camera up. The, the Cuddy Link system obviously requires a lot of communication from camera to camera and then obviously back to you. And so it does take up a lot of battery life. It uses more batteries than a conventional trail camera. And so I would really recommend having some type of backup power source and their Cuddy Back offers a couple different options. One, you can have these power packs on them, um, which will help a lot. It's 6D batteries. Uh, you can back the camera right up to it. Um, and I use this a lot. The other option, which I've started using this year and has worked really, really well in place of the battery pack is this little solar panel, nice compact solar panel. If you have a camera location that gets a good amount of sunlight on a field edge or something like that, this is a great setup. This can go straight into the camera and really you won't have to worry about any battery life issues. As long as you have good sunlight, 
this is going to be providing power to your to your trail camera and uh, that's a really good option for this cutting link system but whether you go with this or a power pack like this one I would def definitely recommend doing something because it, it, the whole point of this system is to not be intrusive not to go to your cameras if you're having to go swap batteries out and put new batteries in um, then you're kind of defeating the purpose of the system. So make sure you have some type of good backup power source. So let's start off with the home camera. Let's go see if we can find a good spot on this ridge, uh, potentially make a, make a mock scrape right here, and we can start expanding the rest of the remote cameras after that. All right, so I got a good spot on top of this ridge, mill farm. I'm gonna create a mock scrape over this overhanging limb that's right over here. Um, but this is a spot when you find your location, here's where you'll wanna go into the cell menu and do your cell test to make sure you have good enough service. So we'll let that run and we'll see if I get an email sent to my phone letting us know we're good to go. So there we go, we got the success notification on the screen here. We should get an email as well. So there you go. There's the cutting link test email sent. So we're, we know we're good now. We know we're in a good location with good cell service. We can adjust our camera settings here, get this all teed up, and then I'll show you the next step. I like to run the delay as short as possible when I'm running Cuddy Link. Um, you don't have the option to do a burst mode when you're in this, so I like to do as, as low of a delay, which is five seconds, both nighttime and daytime. I like to set the delay for five seconds. Now we're good to go. This camera is armed. We'll move on to the next one. So what I'm doing now, I have the firmware update on all the cameras I'm using. I'm putting out four uh, additional remote cameras. I'm going through, I've got, I've got everything set up in the, the link menu with regards to the locations of the cameras. You can name them so that you know which camera one is, camera two is, it'll show up on the, the menu of the images as well um, at, the, at the, the bottom bar. But what I like to do when I set up a camera, I like to turn the next one on right here next to it. So I'm just a couple feet away. So I've got it all set up. It's gonna be camera location two, same link channel. Now I'm on the link level menu. So it's gonna start flashing and tell me what the link level is. This is what you'll wanna watch as you go and set up your next camera. So we'll see what it says. It should show 99 here since we're right next to this camera. Yep, so 99 good. So as we get further and further away from this camera, that level's gonna drop. And I, would want, I like to make sure it doesn't go below 20, just so I, I never have a situation where those cameras can't talk to each other. Um, and this is gonna fluctuate a little bit. Like there might be some days where it's really foggy or something, um, and the level is gonna have a harder time getting through. So that's why I don't wanna go too low, because then you could lose service. Um, but like obviously right now, we're, it's still August here and there's still a lot of vegetation. So I know that if I stretch it out to 20 or right around there, I'm gonna be fine as the leaves start coming off, vegetation starts dying, uh, that level's gonna be just fine. Um, so I'm gonna walk away, but one thing real quick too, I'm gonna take a second camera because there's a spot down the hill that I know for sure I want a camera. There'll be a good little uh, funnel, travel funnel there. I'll create a scrape. Um, but I know from experience I can't get from this spot to here with just these two cameras. So this camera is going to be kind of like my middle man that's going to communicate to that far camera. So I'm going to find a spot about halfway through, set this one up, then go to the next one and that's going to be the communicator to get back to the home camera. So we're going to take both these cameras with us right now. Alright, so we've walked probably 150 yards I would say and the level's fluctuating between 70 and 80. So we, we could keep going. It's fairly open, it's got a good line of sight to that next camera. So we have really good service, more than we need for the system to work. But I know 
this tree is going to get hit and I'd love a camera right here and it's going to serve as close enough to a halfway point to the next spot that I want to get to. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I mean right now it's showing 88 good level so we could definitely go a lot further but like I said this is kind of the middleman to get to the spot I really want to get to. All right, same process as before. We got camera two set up. We're gonna make this camera location three. Go to our link level. Again, it should show 99, so we're good. We're gonna walk to the spot I really wanted to get to, but we're just gonna watch this level as we walk away. We should be able to get a few hundred yards from this spot down the hill to the scrape I wanna create down there. So we'll just start walking and watching this level. Alright, we made it to the spot that I wanted to get to and we're we're just about 300 yards from the last camera or about 400 yards from the home camera and the level's still going between 70 and 80 even even a touch over 80 and so we obviously could go further but this is the spot that I wanted to get to um, this is, I'll do have to do a little doctoring, but this will be a really good scrape this fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up, and uh, this will be camera number three ready to go. It'll be a sweet spot, we're good to go. All right, I'm back at the home camera now. We're gonna go the opposite direction from here. So I'm gonna make this location four get our level and we'll start walking spot here that they really like to go in all right final camera we we stretch this one out quite a ways there's a lot of vegetation between us and the home camera so we're sitting at about 20, and I don't like to go too much below that. You can if it doesn't fluctuate a lot, but if you're in a situation where it's changing a bunch, you might end up at times not having service and try to avoid that by staying around that 20 level. Uh, but this is the final one. We're gonna set this one as location number five and keep working our way down the hill. So we got a nice little five camera Cuddy Link system set up. These five cameras are ready to go. I likely won't have to touch these the entire fall. Um, and that's, that's definitely a game changer, like I said earlier. Um, I do personally still enjoy going out and checking cameras and I don't wanna know everything, but there are certain situations like this that make a lot of sense. This property, uh, for this season anyway, is the furthest one from my house. So I don't, won't get here as often to be able to check cameras and do all that. So this makes perfect sense to have this Cuddy Link cell system in place here. Other properties, I'll run it more conventionally where I just drive around and check them every couple weeks. Um, but this is a killer system and it, it's, as you can tell, it's a hot muggy day here in Iowa. But as soon as that weather breaks here coming up, I think these cameras are going to be on fire. So I'm excited to have got this project done today. While we're here at this home camera, I'm going to create a mock scrape real quick. It's a good little uh, intersection of trails. There's a limb that I can work with, so I'll kind of show you what I've had good luck with as far as mock scrapes in front of cameras. First thing I'm going to do is cut off an oak limb to be able to hang down. And I know different guys have different personal preferences on this. I've always liked oak limbs. They're nice and they're rigid and it's, they seem to like to play around with that. Some guys really like using vines. Some guys like using cedar limbs. It's to each of their own. For me, I think the key is to have something vertical. Um, I think that is the number one attractor, is that vertical branch hanging down, especially if you can get it away from the edge, which is gonna be the case. This one should work out perfectly. We'll be able to hang it down where it's a couple yards off of the edge, and it should be a magnet, especially with the intersection of trails here. So I'm gonna try to cut off something that's gonna be able to hang down. This time of year, you know, it's not as big of a deal on a pine tree, but this time of year, I like to get it to hang down at least to waist level because once all the leaves start coming off, 
those branches tend to elevate when they lose the weight of the leaves. And then if, if you start off too high, if you start off at the right you know, deer nose level, when those leaves come off, it's gonna be too high and you're gonna get deer having to get on their, their hind legs to get up at it. So I, this time of year, I like to hang it a little bit lower with all the, the weight of the leaves on these branches. So I got my branch here. What I like to do at the top, if I'm gonna be overhanging something, I like to create a little, a little V right here. So I have something to hang on that, that branch that I'm gonna be dropping down from. So I got the limb attached. I scraped up the ground, cleared the vegetation there. And the final step, I always like to add a little bit of scent to it just to get it going. Um, the two scents I primarily use are the preorbital gland on the overhanging branch and then the inner digital on the ground. Um, there's a lot of different companies that make these. I don't think that the brand matters too much. They're all real scent from real deer. They're not synthetic. I've had good luck with it. So this is a uh, spray a couple Shots of the inner digital on the ground. A little bit of the pre-orbital on the branch. And sometimes what I'll do, I'll take some pliers and kind of mash up the end of the branch a little bit just to hold the scent in a little bit better. Just like, uh, just like the deer kind of do when they Kind of chew on it. It just exposes those fibers. The scent seems to get in there a little bit better when you do that. And that's really, I kind of let the, the deer take it from there. But um, this will be a, a good spot. I wouldn't be surprised if we have deer here this evening. Um, so this one's ready to go. Got some more to do, but moving forward, it's almost go time. Actually, Grant and I are heading to Kentucky this week, which is crazy. They open September 4th. I'm excited to get back down there again. Um, Grant and I are both gonna be hunting, so we're it, it's hard to believe, but, but we're here. And also moving forward, we're gonna check in with the other guys in the upcoming weeks. We've had guys out moving, guys out with COVID. So it's been a busy time, but um, we'll check in, get hit list updates from everybody. Uh, like I said, it's go time, and we're all, we're all starting to get the itch here at Middle Sweat. We appreciate you guys joining.